Death Valley, a land of austere beauty, bone-dry desert, extremes of both heat and cold. An hour's drive off paved roads lies Racetrack Playa, known for the nearly flat, mud-cracked surface of a dry lake, where rocks move through unknown forces, until now. Most people suggest that movement is driven by hurricane-force winds blowing over rain-slicked mud. Others suggest that floating ice sheets lift rocks, describe remarkably similar trails. In 1976, Bob Sharp and Dwight Carey tested the idea that large ice sheets might move stones. One of the experiments that we did was to create a corral about uh, I don't know, 15 feet in diameter in which two rocks were placed to see if ice had something to do with this movement. What happened during that time period is one of the rocks moved out, the other one stayed. So at least at that time, we were convinced that rice probably didn't play a role in the movement of every stone on the playa. We tested these ideas by installing a weather station. We also embedded GPS units in our own rocks, lugged them to the playa, and there they waited for two years. Jim Norris explains. So my business partner and I designed a custom GPS recorder. Um, little module about three inches in diameter that we could put into stones and we built 15 of those. Those stones are deployed out on the playa as we speak um, and they were designed so that they would sit and wait. And as one of the other researchers on this project said, probably the most boring experiment ever. True, until this year. In late November 2013, Rain and snow create a shallow pond on the southern third of the playa. We observed rocks in motion December 4th, 20th, 21st, and January 9. The days dawn clear and cold with a light breeze. In the morning, the pond was covered with floating ice. Sunlight formed melt pools between large areas of still frozen pond. Ice in the center of the playa melted first. Water was blown onto the shore, causing the remaining floating ice to move. Abruptly, just before noon, the ice broke up into large moving sheets, popping and crackling all over the pond's surface. In the deeper part of the pond, moving ice began to splinter and break up, leaving wakes of open water and ice chips downstream of each rock. Large ice panels, hundreds of feet across, battered some rocks into motion. By good luck and with a long camera lens, we caught some rocks moving on January 9th. In this image, the liquid water is rippled by the wind. The floating ice is darker gray. There are a series of stationary rocks not engaged by ice, and there's a moving stone. And it's off! Here we see a time-lapse set of images at about natural speed of the rock. It moves and fits and starts, pushed by the ice panel, and finally and briefly gets going. Movement is so slow that it is easy to miss, particularly if there are no stationary rocks nearby to act as reference points. This rock was about the size of a cantaloupe and was hard to find months later when the pond was gone because it moved several more times. In a sped up version, the rock quickly stopped moving as it disengaged from the ice. The ice panel drifts out of view. In December and January moves, ice pushed up and over rocks but the trails were initially invisible beneath the muddy water. By early afternoon, the shallow pond had been blown away, revealing more than 60 rock trails, all remarkably similar. Our GPS rocks also moved, and some scribed trails over 700 feet long. Rocks moved only 2 to 5 meters a minute, a slow, shuffling walk at best. As evening came on, the wind slackened and the water flowed back to the south, refilling the pond around the rocks. By February, the pond had dried out, revealing the inscribed surface of the racetrack. Rocks had moved at least four times in the two and a half months the pond existed. Dick Norris notes. To me, the most remarkable things about this are that rocks move, first of all, very slowly, only at a very slow pace, about like that, uh, and that this happens in the middle of the day when the sun is shining, uh, and it's just simply beautiful out here. We had thought before we began uh, to study the racetrack phenomenon that this must happen during howling winds, uh, times of really miserable weather conditions when you really won't, wouldn't want to be out here, and that that was why the phenomenon had never been observed before, 
because the conditions were simply too nasty for anyone to be willingly out here. Rocks are driven by surprisingly thin ice. Indeed, most of the ice is no thicker than a window pane and clear as glass. Rocks move through a combination of a shallow pond, ice, light breezes, and sun to set them in motion. Ponds, in particular, are rare in Death Valley, so rocks may not move for many years or even a decade or more. For now, the sliding rocks continue to fascinate, and we finally know what to look for to see them move. And who knows, there may still be parts of the story yet to be discovered.